Within the Fallout universe, vault Tech is often portrayed as a mysterious and powerful corporation. They are most commonly associated for being the company in charge of the creation of several nuclear fallout shelters across America. These underground shelters would be known as vaults. It is due to their mysterious nature that there exists several common misconceptions about Vault Tech Corp. Let's get into them. This is 5 common misconceptions about Vault Tech. Misconception number 1. Every vault was for the Great War. I'll admit it, I could have phrased this misconception a bit better, but give me some time to explain. So while the United States government did commission 122 followed shelters across the country, not every vault's shelter period was made to start at the first sign of a world-ending event. Rather, there are several vaults whose shelter periods began before the Great War. To start, Vault 22 is not really a fallout shelter, but rather a research facility. Home to scientists, the goal of Vault 22 was to develop crops that could combat global hunger and food shortages. By making crops that were resilient to all sorts of insects, droughts, and disease, these researchers might have been able to improve the world's food production before the impending apocalypse. Many scientists and researchers worked out of the underground facility prior to the Great War. A sign in front of the vault reads, Under the heart of the Mojave Desert, Vault 22 provides a fertile laboratory for experimentation on staple crops to maximize their potential. Within the vault, scientists and horticulturalists continue to innovate our understanding of agricultural possibilities in the fight against the global hunger crisis. The scientists who developed a miracle fertilizer within have made a profound impact on your ordinary life. So take a second to reflect on the hard work of vault tech scientists in improving crop production in arid biomes like the Mojave and for increasing crops resistance to insects, drought, and disease. The wording of this sign implies that the vault was fully functional and operating prior to the Great War. But Vault 22 is not the only one. In a similar vein, Vault 87 was another vault that was not a fallout shelter for civilians, but rather a research facility. This vault was home to the Evolutionary Experimentation Program, or EEP. Under supervision of Dr. Wayne Merrick, the vault would perform various experiments on unwilling test subjects using the forced evolutionary virus. The goal was to create some sort of advanced super soldier for the United States Army. A terminal entry details their goals. The latest subjects in the evolutionary experimentation program are showing some promise after only a single exposure to the modified FEV. We hope to have a breakthrough in this strain as the continual pressure from vault and the military at Mariposa is becoming most bothersome. Vault 87 was feeling a lot of pressure from Vault Tech and the folks at the Mariposa military base. As both the US military and Vault Tech became defunct after the Great War, it must mean that Vault 87 was operating before the war. Another terminal entry further corroborates the claim. It reads, Mission suspended. I'm quite sad to report that due to a direct hit from what I presume to be a nuclear weapon, the main door to Vault 87 is damaged beyond repair, and we are detecting extremely high levels of lethal radiation outside and in the entry tunnel. To me, this would indicate that while Vault 87 was performing their routine experiments and such, their primary vault door was hit with a nuclear weapon, indicating the start of the Great War, and making it impossible to continue with their mission. So with that being said, it would seem that Vault 87 was another vault that was in operation before the bombs dropped. But again, there's more. It's revealed in the Fallout TV series that Vault 4 was another vault that operated prior to the Great War. Vault 4 was yet another vault that housed a bunch of scientists performing an experiment. The vault would be home to a community led entirely by scientists. Now, it's revealed in the 6th episode of the show that Vault 4 hosted a 5-year trial period some time before the Great War. And it further showed that the vault was in operation after the Great War too. 
So either the five year trial period tied into the start of the Great War, which I find likely, or there was a five year trial period, everyone went home, and then it started up again when the air raid sirens went off. But either way, Vault 4 was in operation before the Great War. It's kind of interesting, not every vault was made to protect people from the Great War, rather there were a handful that were going to operate regardless of if the apocalypse came or not. I mean, vault tech built them, you might as well use them. But in an alternate universe, it isn't actually vault tech that would build the vaults. Misconception number two, vault tech was always going to build the vaults. So it's quite clear from playing the games that vault tech is one of the most powerful companies in the entirety of the United States. We see in the Fallout TV series that they managed to host a meeting between other notable and similarly powerful pre-war companies as well, including Robco, Repcon, The Big Empty, and West Tech. vault tech held quite a bit of influence and power, but it wasn't always this way. About 40 or so years before the Great War, vault tech was nothing but a budding defense contractor looking to make it big in the great US of A. The first recorded mention of vault tech in the Fallout timeline is when they purchased the naming rights of Morgantown's local university in 2031, changing the name to vault tech University. Their next notable and documented move wouldn't come for another 20 or so years. It was in the 2050s, amidst a global fear of the new plague, nuclear strikes in the Middle East, and the collapse of the United Nations, that the United States government would start work on Project Safehouse. The US government would issue an open bid for the construction of several fallout shelters across the country. In an effort to be awarded the contract, vault tech built the Los Angeles Vault. The LA Vault was a fully functioning demonstration vault that was presented to the government as a way to show vault techs astounding construction capabilities. This is confirmed by lead fallout designer Chris Taylor, stating, The master was in the vault tech private vault. This was the demonstration model built for the federal government. It was very close to the Vault Tech headquarters. While he doesn't call it the LA Vault, Taylor is describing the home of the first Fallout's antagonist, the Master, which is the LA Vault. A Vault Tech workshop loading screen also mentions, Before the Great War, it had been widely publicized that Vault Tech Industries had won the government contract to provide underground Fallout shelters to the US population. And so it would seem that the presentation of the LA Vault would secure the Project Safehouse contract for Vault Tech, propelling them to becoming one of the country's biggest companies. And this is where the misconception comes in. The Project Safehouse contract could have been awarded to any defense contractor that submitted a bid for it. It didn't have to be Vault Tech. The United States government could have chosen any defense and construction contractor to take on Project Safehouse. It was only because of vault Tech's demonstration vault that they managed to secure the contract. In an alternate timeline, maybe it's some other company that goes on to become the all-powerful and influential group in charge of securing humanity's future. Maybe in this timeline, they're not a bunch of sick freaks wanting to perform human experimentation at every chance they get. But, of course, as we know, it wasn't some random company that skyrocketed to the top. It was Vault Tech. They would make their vaults, make some sick experiments, and seal them up for a hundred plus years. Or would they? Misconception number three. All the vaults were sealed for a long time. Vault Tech's vaults, while many housed twisted experiments, did indeed act like long-term fallout shelters. They were self-sufficient, allowing for clean water and produce to be made within their confines. Vault dwellers could last generations within one of the vaults. And we see this in game. For example, in the first Fallout, Vault 13 is still in operation 84 years after the Great War. Fallout 3 shows that Vault 101 has been operating for 200 years. Vault 81 in the Commonwealth is still operating 210 years after the Great War. 
and the Amazon series shows that vaults 33, 32, and 31 are still in operation 219 years after the bombs fell. Many vaults were sealed for a long time, but not all. There are a handful of vaults that opened up rather quickly. According to the Fallout Bible, Vault 8 would open 10 years after the Great War, leaving the vault dwellers to use their geck to found Vault City. The Los Angeles Vault would open only 15 years after the Great War. The Fallout Bible reads, 2092, LA Vault opens, the Boneyard is founded and attracts survivors. And of course, the main gimmick with Vault 76 was that it was always going to open 25 years after it was first sealed. This means that on October 23rd, 2102, the vault dwellers from 76 would be forced to leave their shelter, ready to build back Appalachia. But the shortest known shelter period for any vault is actually one year, and that belongs to Vault 94. A Bethesda blog post introducing the vault to Fallout 76 reads, the vault's door rolled open exactly one year after the bombs fell. Those who had been living safely within its confines found the wasteland and groups of other survivors on the outside to be less than welcoming of their arrival. Vault 94 remains, though its inhabitants are long gone and it has been completely overrun by nature. So yes, while there are many vaults that were sealed for a long time, patiently waiting to be reopened, there are a handful that opened their gear-shaped doors rather quickly. Misconception number 4. They only made the vaults. When one thinks of vault tech, their minds instantly go to the vaults. I mean, it's in the name. But vault tech is responsible for so many more products and technologies than you might have thought. And the show sorta explains why this is. It reveals that vault tech would frequently buy out other companies, making them subsidiaries of the Mega Corp. So, of course, they made the vaults, but vault Tech also manufactured and sold the many more Fallout shelters that we see in Fallout 76. The equipment used in the vaults is their doing, the various reactors, water pumps, and food synthesizers we see across the many vaults were made by vault Tech. But they even had a hand in many other products outside of nuclear Fallout shelters. The Zax AI supercomputers, Zax 1.0, Zax 1.2, Zax 1.3C, and John Henry Eden, were initially developed by Vault Tech as a means to govern the vaults. Fallout Bible 6 reads, Zax 1.0 goes online, developed by Vault Tech. Initially a prototype of the systems designed to govern the vaults, it is given to the government to help the Department of Energy collect resource data. Within a year, it is taken by the military for plague and tactical research. One version, Zax 1.2, is constructed for West Tech. They also made various products designed to reclaim the wasteland. The Garden of Eden creation kit was Stanislaus Braun's genius creation. Vault Tech also made the similarly abbreviated construction and assembly mobile platform, essentially a more practical GEC. And they're also the creators of the Vault Tech Assisted Targeting System, or VATS. All very useful products if one finds themselves in a lawless and barren wasteland. Vault Tech is also responsible for the pink food paste that we see in Fallout 4's Suffolk County Charter School. Fallout 4's Vault Dweller Survival Guide reads, The student base of Suffolk County Charter School consisted mostly of lower income and disadvantaged students. These children were lucky enough to be chosen for trials of a new food substitute paste developed by Vault Tech in conjunction with the US government. That pink goop was made by Vault Tech. There's more though. In the show, it's revealed that Vault Tech made an economical means of avoiding the apocalypse. It was called Plan D. Plan D was a banana flavored cyanide capsule that folks could take to have a painless death instead of vaporizing from a nuclear blast. Dr. Wilzig mentions that it was probably the most humane thing that Vault Tech ever made. Vault Tech also made other miscellaneous products, including merchandise, video games, and they even had their own television channel. Vault Tech is one of pre war America's biggest companies. 
They kind of came out of nowhere and catapulted to the top of the corporate hierarchy. Knowing them only for making the vaults does a real disservice to the true power and influence they had prior to the Great War. But despite vault commercial success, within their ranks, not everything was hunky-dory. Misconception number 5. vault leadership was unified. As mentioned several times already in this video, vault was a mighty powerful company, and with it being so powerful, one might think that they were unified in their goals. But this is not necessarily the case. vault is an expansive company with various departments, executives, and researchers. It's almost like its own country. They have Budge Tech, Future Tech, vault Films, vault Game Studios, vault Public Relations Department, vault Science Service, the Societal Science Division, Psychological Research Division, and many more. Even if vault has a singular CEO and a board of directors, it's not hard to assume that each of these groups have their own varying motivations and directives. And we can kind of see this with just how varied each vault experiment is. Some vaults like Vault 75 and 87 were designed with the goal of creating super soldiers in mind. Other vaults like Vault 11 and Vault 112 were more like twisted games and social experiments. And other vaults were mostly normal, like Vault 101 and Vault 15. While these vaults did have associated experiments attached to them, isolation and extreme diversity, they were generally quite normal. With this massive divide between the themes of the vaults, it's easy to see that Vault Tech Corp wasn't a company with a cohesive governing body. The Fallout TV series also shows some of the fractures in Vault Tech leadership. During a meeting with other powerful companies, Vault Tech executives Barb Howard and Bud Askins suggest that Vault Tech should launch the first nuke themselves in order to guarantee a return on investment for their vaults and, and such. And while not many Vault Tech executives or higher ups make an appearance or are mentioned by name in the Fallout games, this is the first and only time that we have seen a vault Tech employee suggest that they should start the Great War. This absurd suggestion by Barb could imply that her and Bud have a separate agenda to that of the other vault Tech executives. And lastly, although seldom mentioned in this video, it's a vault Tech video, not an Enclave video, the shadowy pre-war government cabal known as the Enclave did have their grubby little mitts in vault Tech's daily procedures. It was the Enclave who were the ones who hijacked the Societal Preservation Program and turned the Fallout Shelters into experiments in the first place. Dick Richardson in Fallout 2 notes that we, the Enclave, had a number of sanctuaries that would enable the glorious American civilization to endure. These facilities, the vaults, were part of the Great Plan. He goes on later to say that they were set up to test humanity in extreme conditions. And while it is likely that some vault Tech executives were also part of the Enclave, vault Tech and the Enclave are not synonymous with each other. And so, this power dynamic between these two organizations can lead to the question of who is truly pulling the strings at vault Tech. Is it the vault Tech executives, or is it the Enclave? Either way, it would seem that vault Tech Corporation isn't as united and connected as they would seem at first. And that wraps up what I believe to be 5 common misconceptions about vault Tech. From the purpose of the vaults to the cohesion of their leadership, I think it's safe to say that vault Tech is not only pre-war America's biggest company, but also its most enigmatic. Word of advice, don't trust a company that sells both a Fallout Shelter and Donkey Kong. That's not right. But that's all from me today folks. If you liked the video, be sure to share and subscribe, join the Discord, have a good rest of your day, Cheers. I must say, you're quite the actress. What can I say? It just comes naturally. Have you ever done radio? Your voice is quite enchanting. I must say, I've known flesh and blood girls who aren't half the woman you are.